Oh, hello. Welcome back to the Shell Toucher channel. Today's tip, trick, and hack is brought to you by me, the Shell Toucher. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Bienvenido de nuevo. That's Spanish. And that's what we'll be talking about today. These will be tips, tricks, and hacks into accelerating your Spanish language acquisition. Do I have something crawling in my beard? Sancudo. Hit it! Okay, folks, now, hopefully this video isn't coming to you too late. You've waited too long, but Spanish. There's nothing that shows greater respect and gratitude towards your host country than learning a little bit of the language. And you don't even need to do it for that, but just to get by the basics, we'll do that for you. To get by, the basics will do that for you. Just to get by, having the basics will get you pretty far. Farther than without having any Spanish at all. So I encourage you to learn the language. I know it sounds like a lot of work, especially if you may have never taken a language in your life. However, in 2024, we are so technically advanced when it comes to language acquisition. There's so many free ways of acquiring a language these days, where back in the day you had to go to take class in school year after year and really, que ores? I mean, that's all you got. Hola. Me llamo es. I mean, it was really basic, and oftentimes you don't remember it. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You probably have four, five, at least one year of Spanish in you, and you don't speak Spanish. It's a joke, right? But there are ways and tricks, tips, and hacks to get you where you need to go. Why should I learn Spanish? Just interacting with the locals alone. They're going to really appreciate that. But also, in emergency situations, it's good to know a little Spanish so you can convey what exactly is going on with you. Otherwise, it's like taking your dog to the vet. The vet doesn't speak dog. The dog doesn't speak vet. You really gotta... I mean, at the end of the day, doctors are just guys who couldn't make it in veterinarian school. You know what I mean? It's good to have a little bit of the language for emergency situations. First and foremost. And if that is something, if you maybe who have something that you're concerned with, maybe learn the language around that so you can explain it really fast if you need to. Cultural engagement, a deeper experience while you're in Spain. You're going to be hiking through ancient churches, ancient villages. I mean, I don't know why Hollywood continues to build these sets when they're still there in Spain. If you're filming a medieval documentary or film or movie, they're there. These villages are there. So just to interact with the environment around you, you might need a little bit of Spanish. There's monuments there that are typically only in Spanish. You know, you'll get the basics. You'll get the gist of what's going on faster than you would if you didn't know the language at all. So it's little things like that. Guidebooks, Spanish guidebooks, signage, street signs, asking for directions, just knowing right, derecha, izquierda, from left, todo derecho, straight. Just the basics like that will get you where you need to go in a pinch. If you're, um, farmers, you're talking to a farmer on the side of the road who's yelling out of the side of his tractor directions to you, if you can catch one or two of those words, he's, you, don't, you don't have time to pull out the guide or the phrase book to interact with them. So can, these moments do happen. Trust me. So that's another reason. Because you need reason. Accommodations and services. Mm -hmm. You might find places on Booking.com that are they're already completo. They're already full. But are they? Probably not. Call the hostel or the albergue directly and talk to somebody. Book. Sometimes they speak English. Sometimes they don't. Often they don't. So you're going to need a little bit of basic Spanish to make a reservación. Not even a reservación. I find, this is, a, this is another tip, use reserva. Reserva? Reserva. Rather than reservación. It's understood immediately. People shorten the word. And there's actually places I tried to book that don't, don't they thought I was speaking French when I said reservation. Reservation is what I'm trying to say. So reserva. Little basic things like that will make booking easy because you don't really need much of the language to book a night. You may need to know the time you're going to be there. So learn numbers, learn times. And this is really easy to do. It doesn't take much, it takes very little practice. And learn the alphabet. Now you don't need to learn the sounds of all of the alphabet, but at least learn the sounds to spell your name with. Yeah, I mean, it's the same alphabet. They have like one extra letter than we do in English, but the sounds are different. So learn how the alphabet sounds. 
if anything. So you can just spell your name. So, and also pharmacies, pharmacias, for medication, for ibuprofen, so on and so forth. Learn aspirina. Necesito aspirina. Some of you will get that. Learn what you need before you get there. So make us a personalized Spanish journal, if you will, of things that you're going to need to say. And practice them over and over and over. Of course, there's social interactions. Do you want to probably get beyond Buen Camino? Yeah. You, you definitely do. It makes for a more enriched experience. Understanding local information. Weather conditions can change, can vary. You want to make sure you're kind of understanding what people are saying to you or notices. Is the water clean or not? So you want the basic Spanish to understand these important issues as they come up. And there's another thing that just reduces the anxiety that is part of the Camino. I know, it sounds like I have anxiety issues. Truthfully, it does cut down on that. And you wanna, you know, be aware of what's going on and any chance to lower the stress and frustration, this is definitely key. So how should you start? How should you study? Who should you study with? There are definitely online tutors that you can study with live, one-on-one. -on -one. But if, again, if you're getting close to your community, you probably don't have that much time. And I find like the one-on-one -on -one conversations, you need a lot of them. You really do. And uh, there's a whole like comfort zone level. You have to have a few lessons with the teacher before you get really comfortable with them. And it can really like, you know, just embarrass yourself because you're going to do that with a one-on-one -on -one person. So maybe you want to learn a little on your own first. There are lots of apps out there. There's a lot of free resources out there where you can do this. Here are some recommendations. Synergy Spanish is one of the first ones I would check out if I were you. Synergy Spanish, is, it's, it's probably been around for 20 years at this point, very close. Maybe 20, 2005, it might've come onto the scene, but they have a bunch of courses. They also have an app and that's the real, that's the key part about it. They put together this whole system, this synergetic system, if you will, of basic Spanish that you will be able to use immediately and remember immediately. I believe Marco Santa Maria is the teacher and he has native Spanish speakers that will, that work with him, that are speaking. So you're hearing it spoken by a native, sorry. Sancudo. You're hearing it spoken by a native Spanish speaker. So you're getting that accent in your head and eventually you're able to emulate that accent or at least pick up from it. So, and it uses a bunch of different native speakers on different courses. It's really great, but again, it's an app. So you can listen to it while you're driving your car and you should be listening to it while you're driving your car, but most importantly, while you're training. If you're doing a lot of hiking and you're all burnt out with your podcasts or um, Camino audiobooks, all this stuff you should be doing. In fact, maybe start off with the language app, listening to that, repeating it for the first half an hour of your hike, and then go to your audiobook after the fact. But be getting the Spanish in you every day for is you know at least 15 minutes just basic phrases so synergy spanish is a great place i'm not affiliated with any of these things i'll put links below uh, there's no kickbacks or anything like that this is just stuff that's worked for me and uh exposes me to spanish on a daily basis so synergy spanish love it been using it for probably about 15 years now uh great great course now language transfer this is a relatively new app i think within the last year it's awesome it's free too synergy spanish isn't free well, they do have actually free, now let's rewind to, let's rewind to Synergy Spanish. They actually have some free online courses as well on YouTube. A lot of these, these brands, if you will, or these courses will have free ones too on YouTube. So you can test them out. So check out Synergy Spanish on YouTube first. Next, what was I? Language transfer, relatively new course, free. That's right, the price is right. But this is a really, really, really cool course. The teacher, I believe he's Greek, but he speaks perfect English. He is, he's got to be a linguist. It's perfect. I mean, just like he does it so well. He teaches Spanish like I've never experienced it before. And I don't know why a lot of other people don't. It's clearly his own course, but it's very almost philosophical at times. but super interesting. Like you are captivated from lesson to lesson to lesson. I believe there are, I like 70 lessons. There's a lot of lessons. I haven't even finished it yet, but it's also supplemental while doing these other courses and helpful to listen to this course. So language transfer, it's free, put it on your phone. Listen to that while you're driving. Listen to that while you're hiking. Listen to that before bed even. Listen to that while you sleep. It's just a really good course and it's gonna give you a lot of these basic, interesting ways of thinking about the foundations of the language, why certain things are the way they are that you don't typically get in a Spanish course. Definitely not in a high school or a college. Well, it depends what level, a Spanish course. So check out language transfer next there's spanish with paul spanish with paul he has a lot of free courses on youtube you might want to check this out first in fact check this out right now well not right now wait till we're done wait till you've liked comment and subscribe in fact 
but Spanish with Paul, free courses on YouTube, but he also has courses that you can buy online and not an app, but you can listen to it on your phone. You can download it is what it is. There's some parts of his course that you can download and listen to in the car, listen to while you're hiking. I really do wish his course had an app like Synergy Spanish or like Language Transfer. That would really make it next level, but it is what it is. And it's a really great course too. If you have more time, if you're like six months, if you're six months out to a year out, delve into Spanish with Paul and he'll get you there too. A lot of these courses are, they, they overlap each other. So I think if you can stack them, you're going to really get a lot in a short amount of time and it'll, it'll get you the basics. You'll be craving more in fact, but yeah, Spanish with Paul, another great course. I highly recommend that. He's got courses that are like also ear training where you listen to the Spanish. You kind of take a lesson first. You learn the Spanish, learn the vocab, and then listen to it spoken after the fact. This is an entirely separate course from his main course, but if you've done his main course, you get the, the ear training course and listen to it and write down as much as you can possibly understand. You know, translate it and it builds your Spanish ear, which does take time. Other, you know, a lot of people are like, just watch Spanish movies and listen to Spanish music. It's not that easy. It's like, imagine listening to songs in English where you don't know any English words. What's going to really jump out at you? Nada. You need to have a little bit of a background in, in, you know, in the target language before you start listening to new Spanish music or watching movies. It's not going to work. If you do decide to go that route, I definitely recommend sticking with your target language accent. Since you're going to Spain, you want to hear stuff with the Spanish accent, the, the Lithia. You don't want to hear with the Latin. While that will help, aim for real Spanish, uh, Castellano, Spanish, Spanish. That's the target language <clears throat> that you want to get your ear trained to. So if you are going through the route of listening to music and watching movies when you don't speak any of the language, thinking that's getting in there, at least it's going to get you familiar with the sounds. So there's something to that. Another, you know, and to piggyback on that, reading in Spanish too, basic Spanish reading books, whether you know the language or not, just reading them 20 minutes a day. You might not understand anything, but just reading them, eventually your head gets mente your mind uh, gets used to the rhythm of the language and you can see how it's working grammatically even. So it's just reinforcing it. But again, this is just preliminary stuff. If you're not understanding it. You're just going through the motions and you're trying to pronounce the sound, make the sounds with your mouth. And you know, here's another tip. This is going to really help you, especially if you can't roll your R's. While it's not necessary to roll your R's, you'll be understood better if you can. Granted, there are many Spanish speakers where Spanish is their native language that don't roll their R's, but there are many more that do. So if you are want to feel more confident maybe in your Spanish, practice rolling your R's. And I know that's easier said than done because it's a whole different way to use your tongue in your mouth than you do in English or any other language. So here's a simple tongue twister that you can do anywhere. I recommend doing it in your car at red lights where people can watch you. Or just hiking. But I mean, you should definitely be practicing this a few times each day. And it goes like, I'll put the text right here. Every con every cigarro, every con every barril, and this will warm up your mouth before you start reading the Spanish or pronouncing the Spanish. In fact, if I'm doing lessons and I find that I'm not pronouncing stuff right, I'll do that tongue twister a few times. And this isn't that weird. In fact, in theater, you do mouth and vocal exercises before you get on stage. Singers do it as well. So before you speak a language, a new language to you, you might also want to do vocal exercises. And again, the tongue twisters are the best when it comes to learning how to roll your R's. And this is a nonsensical phrase. All these words are real, but they make no sense when strung together. However, you're practicing rolling the R's. So one more time. And this rhythm, this is probably what the speed you want to get it up to. Every con every cigarro, every con every barril, rápido ruido los carros plus reales de ferrocarril. You hear all that rolling? I'm actually better than that, but I've done probably like five videos in a row right now, and my mouth, I don't know if you can't hear it, it's dry. Seco. My problem, not yours. Next, Accelerated Spanish. This is a textbook, but they make videos too. They're on YouTube. I believe they're free. Definitely have courses. The teacher is Timothy Moser. This is an interesting approach to all these courses I've given you are so off the beaten path when it comes to language learning. We didn't have this stuff back then. This one uses a lot of um, memory tools to memorize the language, but it's not like that memorizing something. It's, it makes it fun, unique creative storytelling to remember how to use certain verbs. It's definitely worth a look and again, supplemental with all these other courses, but I highly recommend Accelerated Spanish. That said, and if you can still find it, Spanish by Association is another great book. For every word, it gives you a mnemonic device in order to remember that word. I'll give you an example right now. Arroz. 
Arroz. It means rice. Probably can figure that out. Actually, arroz and rice are the same word. It's just arroz comes from the Arabic influence in Spain. And a means da. So arroz. Arroz is rice. Arroz, the rice. Rice. So you see the correlation? Yeah. That's the impact that the, the Muslims or the Arabs had in Spain. Remember, they were there for close to 800 years before Spain reconquered that land. That's kind of like the Native Americans taking the United States back now. Or, I mean, it's not even that, I mean, we haven't even been there that long. So they had quite an effect on the Spanish language. So arroz, how to remember the word for rice is imagine an arrow flying into your bowl of rice. Arrow, flying into rice, arroz. A -R I'll spell it right here. A-R-O-Z. Arroz. So that's just a, a small example of what they use for a memory aid. And they really do work. You could read this book in a weekend. At the end of the weekend, you will know probably 200 new Spanish words. So little tricks like that. The more vocabulary you have, the better off you'll be. You may not be able to speak the language fluently. You may not be able to speak the language at all. But you'll have some of those words. And those words are important. They'll get you further than they, you would if you didn't have any words at all. So definitely, if you have time still before your trip, you're probably leaving next week before I already left your back. And if you're planning for your next Camino, that's awesome. If you have a year's time to learn, do that. I also recommend hiring a tutor. I know, some of us are shy, and it's like a, we haven't been in class for years. But hiring a tutor, pre-ply, P-R-E-P-L-Y, have great tutors on there at different price ranges. You can pay like 10 you probably like eight to probably thirty dollars a lesson if you wanted to. Take at least one class a week. That way, it'll keep you honest in regards to your Spanish. You may lose interest, but if you have a class or have a teacher for one hour a week, at least you're getting some of that before your trip for the course of a year. You've got to be in a better place than when you were not studying Spanish. Does that make sense? I'm just here to encourage you and to inspire. Is what it all comes down to. Inspiración es muy, muy, muy importante, no? See that? My Spanish voice. It's like Antonio Banderas, no? No? No. It's not. Who am I kidding? Energy. That said, if you have enjoyed today's episode, if you've gotten something out of the episode, out of this episode, and I know you have, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Is it below? It might be over here. Subscribe wherever you see a subscription button or option. Even that little bell notification. Hit that, and you'll be notified immediately. <laughs> right? Every time a new video drops. And if you have your own Spanish language tips, tricks, and hacks, and I'm sure you do, and I, I know there's some I'm forgetting, Leave them below in the comments. We all should be helping each other out when it comes to learning and loving the Spanish language. As I do. And as you should, too. Do as I do. One coming up.